of the important properties of a sequence. A sequence is called an increasing sequence if the y values of the sequence start increasing in size, like a1 is less than a2, less than a3, and so on. It's called decreasing if the y value of the sequence start decreasing in size. It's called monotonic sequence if it's either increasing or decreasing. Let's take a look at one example and do a little bit of algebra. A sequence 3 divided by n plus 5 is decreasing. Why is that? From basic algebra, we know that 5 plus 1 or 6 is more than 5. So basically, if I add n to both sides, this is basic algebra, 6 is more than 5. If I add n to both sides as a positive number, n plus 6 is more than n plus 5. So if I flip this, I get the following fraction and inequality. I have 1 divided by n plus 5 is going to be more than 1 divided by n plus 6. And if I multiply both sides by a positive number like 3, the inequality stays the same. So here 3 divided by n plus 5 is going to be more than 3 divided by n plus 6. So what's the meaning of that? Hey, the quantity on the left-hand side is basically my sequence itself. So I just showed that the general term of the sequence is more than a n plus 1 or divided by 3 divided by n plus 6. So indeed, you have a decreasing sequence. You could also write down the function corresponding to this sequence and show that the derivative of that function is negative on its domain. In the next example, we're going to verify that. So take a look. Here I have a sequence which is defined as n divided by n squared plus 1. We want to show that this guy is decreasing sequence. Since we have a quotient expression, here we need to apply quotient rule. If you have f divided by g, and then you want to take the derivative, it is f prime g minus f g prime divided by the denominator to the second power. So let us write down the corresponding function f of x, which is x divided by x squared plus 1, and take its derivative, which becomes the derivative of x, which is 1 multiplied by x squared plus 1 minus the derivative of x squared plus 1, which is 2x times x gives you 2x squared. And take the denominator and raise it to the second power. Your numerator becomes 1 minus x squared divided by x squared plus 1 to the second power. And this guy is going to be negative whenever your x is positive. So for any x more than 1, and eventually for any n more than 1, you get a negative derivative. Since the derivative is negative, it means that you have a decreasing function or decreasing sequence in this case. Next definition for you. A sequence is called bounded above if you can find a fixed function like m such that all of the terms of the sequence are less than equals to that fixed function m. Let's visualize this. So here I have a fixed function, y equals to m. And then the terms of the sequence, the y values of the sequence, are just getting larger and larger, but eventually after a while, they have a fixed behavior, and they are less than or equals to this fixed y value. m. In this case, we say that, hey, the sequence is bounded above by this fixed function. It's very similar to what we did for squeeze theorem. But you might have different functions above and below. Now we say that the sequence is bounded below. If you can find another fixed function like m, such that all of the terms of the sequence are more than equals to that number. If you have a sequence which is bounded above and below, you're going to say, hey, I have a bounded sequence. And we have a nice theorem here. The theorem says every bounded monotonic sequence is indeed convergent. Take a look at a few examples going over different topics. We want to show that the sequence square root of n plus 1 minus square root of n is decreasing and bounded below. 
the function f of x corresponds to the sequence is square root of x plus 1 minus square root of x. This is indeed decreasing. Why is that? If I take the derivative, I get 1 divided by 2 times square root of x plus 1 minus the derivative of square root of x, which is 1 over 2 times square root of x. This is indeed a negative derivative for any positive x value. So the corresponding sequence is going to be decreasing sequence. So, so far we just verified that we have a decreasing sequence. We can show that it's bounded below by a fixed function, zero. Why is that? If you find the limit of this function, f of x is equal to square root of x plus one minus square root of x. To find the limit at infinity, if you just plug in infinity, you get infinity minus infinity, which is in determinate form. So we have to multiply this function by its conjugate to simplify that. This becomes, if you multiply the numerator by the conjugate, you have to do the same thing for the denominator. So you have to have a denominator of square root of x plus 1 plus square root of x. On the numerator, if you multiply these two quantities, you get square root of x plus 1 to the second power minus square root of x to the second power, and you're going to copy down the denominator here as well. Your numerator becomes x plus 1 minus x, which is basically 1, and denominator stays the same. So we rewrote the function to be 1 divided by square root of x plus 1 plus square root of x. Now, if you take the limit as x goes to infinity, the limit is 0. So for sure, you can say that, hey, this function is bounded below by fixed function 0. Next example for you, you want to find the limit of the following sequence, square root of 2 square root of 2 times square root of 2, plus 2 times square root of 2 times square root of 2, and so on. We're going to do a little bit of algebra. First of all, square root of 2 times square root of 2 is the square root of 2 times 2 to power a half, which is 2 to power 1 times 2 to power a half. If you just write one base and add the exponents, you get 2 to power 3 divided by 2. This is basically the rule of exponents. If you have the same base, you can add the exponents. Now, if you take the square root of 2 to power 3 halves, it is 2 to power 3 halves times a half or three to power, 2 to power 3 fourth. Why do we want to use this? Because a1, the very first term of the sequence is square root of 2. The second term of your sequence can be written as 2 to power 3 fourth. And the next term, the third term of your sequence, can be rewritten as 2 to the power 7 over 8 and so on. So do you see any pattern? Yes, we do. A n can be written as 2 to the power 2 n minus 1 divided by 2 to 2 n. If you do the division, if you separate these into two fractions, you get 2 to the n divided by 2 to the n, which is 1 minus 1 divided by 2 to the n. Now, if you take the limit as n goes to infinity, this is the limit of 2 to the power 1 minus 1 over 2 to the n. As n goes to infinity, this becomes 0. So you have 2 to the power 1 or 2. So this is the limit of this sequence. Pure algebra, everybody. We use pure algebra to rewrite the y values. And then we find a pattern. The pattern is on the numerator. You have 2 to the power n minus 1 divided by 2 to the power n. Another example for you. This is a little bit more complicated, but bear with me. Show that the sequence defined by a1 is 1, a n plus 1 equals to 3 minus 1 over a n is basically an increasing sequence, and a n is less than 3. And then deduce that this sequence is convergent and find its limit. We're going to apply induction. By using induction, we can make decision about this sequence. Suppose Pn is the proposition that the sequence is increasing and 
the sequence is bounded below by zero and bounded above by three. Obviously, P1 is true. Why is that? Because P1 says, hey, A1 is equal to one and one is bounded between zero and three, which is absolutely fine. And A2, which is equal to three minus one, two. So two is more than one. And of course, A1, which is one, is bounded between zero and three. This is your very first step. Now assume that Pn is true, and then you wanna show that it's true for An plus one. Since Pn is true, it means that An plus one is more than An. It means that one over An plus one is less than one over An. Now, if you multiply both sides by negative sign, you get negative one over An plus one, which is more than negative one over a n. Now, a n plus two is equal to three minus one over a n plus one, which is indeed more than three minus one over a n. But this guy, as we defined, is a n plus one. So we just proved p n plus one. So this proves that the sequence is increasing and bounded above by three. So a n is bounded between one and three, that is, your sequence is bounded and hence it is convergent. You can find the limit, and if you set the limit to be equals to one, to be L, L is equal to three minus one over L. The limit of the left-hand side and the limit on the right-hand side, they are the same. Here, L is equal to three minus one over L. Now, if you do a little bit of algebra and solve this quadratic equation, the L or the limit of the sequence becomes three plus square root of five divided by two.